Member for Forest Hill. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I rise today to oppose the motion before the House. I want to say from the outset that I am not in any way anti-vaccination. The important thing for all Victorians to realise is that, in my opinion, this motion is actually not about vaccinations. It is about freedoms. Freedom for an individual to make a choice regarding a provisionally approved invasive medical procedure. Freedom to be a part of society. Freedom to have a job and earn a living. Freedom to keep private your personal medical records. Freedom of democracy. In my opinion, freedoms are well worth fighting for. As a member of the Liberal Party, I stand here today to defend the very basic and vital values of this party. The values of freedom, of individual responsibility and of personal choice. I also stand here for all the people who, whether through necessity or free choice, are not receiving this vaccination. I'm standing here for the many thousands of Victorians who are about to lose their jobs tomorrow as a result of exercising their conscience and their free choice. I'm standing here for the people who have been coerced into being vaccinated. I'm also standing here for all the doctors who have been forbidden from exercising their best medical judgments for their patients. I'm standing here for the ordinary Victorians who have been silenced and forbidden from gathering together to express a point of view different from this government. I'm standing here for the many faith communities who are facing the issue of having to turn people away from their services and facilities. Countless people from the Forest Hill District and way beyond, across a wide range of occupations, have contacted me and expressed their despair and hopelessness that they are about to lose their, lose their livelihoods and don't know what they're going to do. The Prime Minister has clearly stated that vaccinations for COVID-19 will be voluntary. In a letter dated the 6th of September 2021, the Prime Minister states in relation to the vaccine, and I quote, it will not be compulsory to have the vaccine. The government is clear that vaccination is a personal choice, end quote. The Australian Department of Health Therapeutic Goods Administration website clearly states that the COVID-19 vaccines currently being used are provisionally approved, all subsequent to January 2021. The stated purpose of the motion before the House is, and I quote, to protect the health and safety of members, of parliamentary, members and parliamentary staff and reduce the risk of transmission of COVID-19, end quote. I unequivocally note that I'm certain no unvaccinated person would want to get COVID, nor even more importantly, to pass COVID on to anyone else. However, it is very important for all Victorians to understand that a vaccinated person can get COVID-19 and can also transmit COVID-19. Given this, one simple solution would be what the Liberal Nationals have been calling on the government to do for many months, and that is to introduce rapid testing. This simple and effective test would give a real-time assessment of a person's COVID-19 status and thus virtually eliminate any risk. The other key missing part of the solution that I have raised in this place and elsewhere multiple times is that of early treatments for COVID-19. Many other places in the world have successfully used early treatments against COVID-19, and I again urge both the state and federal governments to investigate and pursue these options as a matter of utmost urgency. The result of the Premier's announcement on the 1st of October this year is that medical apartheid will be commencing in Victoria in a few days' time. Victoria will be a two-class society. A great leader will always inspire with hope and a clear vision. This is one of the most important roles and characteristics of a successful leader. A great leader brings people together and unites them. They don't divide people, especially in a time of great difficulty. They don't shame people, blame people, and pit one person against another. Here in Victoria, we have never seen a more divided and broken society. The moving of this motion and the issuing of public orders to affect this for the broader community clearly demonstrates this. Victoria will become a two-tier society. Unvaccinated people will be sacked from their jobs and will be excluded from the ordinary functioning of society. Is this what we want for Victoria, especially in light of our accelerating vaccination rate? 
In Victoria, we have been governed by fear for the last 18 months. Every day, Victorians are lectured at, berated and punished by government MPs and representatives, despite the overwhelming number of people doing their very best and complying with the rules. Victorians are living in fear of COVID-19, in fear of the police and authorities, in fear of having or sharing a point of view different to the government, in fear of segregation, in fear of others, even friends or neighbours. Alarmingly, I note that in the UK House of Commons recently, a bill entitled the COVID-19 Vaccine Damage Bill has been introduced. The long title of this bill is, and I quote, a bill to require the Secretary of State to establish an independent review of disablement caused by COVID-19 vaccinations and the adequacy of the compensation offered to persons so disabled and for connected purposes, end quote. It is a bill about all the people who have suffered severe adverse effects or death as a result of a COVID-19 vaccination. Given the numerous reports of significant adverse events and damage I have heard of throughout Australia, sadly, I will not be at all surprised to see a similar bill being required here at some stage. The concept that a House of Parliament under the wonderful Westminster tradition can demand that any of its elected members undertake a provisionally approved invasive medical procedure to be eligible to sit in this place is an unprecedented proposition and attacks the very heart of our democratic system. Given the very recent backflips on government decrees made regarding judges and Commonwealth employees, the actual legality of many of the government's ad hoc announcements may well be questionable. In the last almost two years, many of the rights and freedoms that all Victorians had previously enjoyed and had largely taken for granted have been removed in the name of COVID-19. I understand and agree with the need for some of them, but I and my Liberal National colleagues have repeatedly spoken out against many of these restrictions as being too onerous, ineffective <clears throat> or just plain mean-spirited. I note that for virtually all of the restrictions, Victorians are still waiting to see the actual health advice that lies behind them, advice which the government has repeatedly refused to release. In my opinion, we are racing towards a totalitarian regime here in Victoria, and it has to stop. I have not got time to speak about the numerous charters, codes and conventions that the actions of the Andrews government have repeatedly breached over the last 18 months, but they are many. I would like to thank all the AMBOs, nurses, doctors and other staff in the hospitals who are working tirelessly under very challenging conditions to treat patients who have COVID-19, COVID-19 vaccine injuries and other ailments. It has been an extremely stressful time for them and I trust that they will remain strong over the coming days and months as they care for all these patients. I would like to thank all the psychiatrists, psychologists and counsellors who are also working tirelessly as a result of being inundated with people suffering immensely from increased stress and anxiety as a result of Victoria's world record lockdown from the mandatory vaccination orders, as well as from the ongoing fear and shame campaign pushed by the Premier. I would like to thank all the doctors who have been giving early treatment and care to their patients and have helped hundreds of people to recover from COVID-19 and prevented them from being hospitalised. In particular, I note the important work being done by expert doctors all around the world, such as Dr Pierre Corey, Dr Paul Marrick, Dr Simone Gold, Dr Brian Tyson, Dr Peter McCulloch, Professor Thomas Barodi, Dr Joseph Ferron, and countless other doctors who have been on the front line of COVID-19 and have been, and still are, successfully treating COVID-19 patients. These highly qualified, hardworking doctors have in many cases dared to go against the groupthink and government mantra. In conclusion, for the reasons I have stated, I believe this motion is wrong and should be opposed, which I will do. Thank you.